you are having some nice loose stools, you're like, hey, hey, diarrhea, probably the first time in your life you are appreciative of those nice loose stools. That could be a sign that we are in some early labor or labor is coming. <laughs> All of you beautiful birthing people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth, also known as Nurse Sabe here on YouTube and Instagram. I am a labor and delivery nurse and a certified childbirth educator who, like many of you, is also rather pregnant. So 38 weeks and one day today. And we are officially on Labor Watch which really just means that I am kind of done with being pregnant and I would like to be in labor and really nothing else besides that. Now I am doing my best to practice my patience. I am doing my best to trust my body and my baby as I encourage all of you to do. But also that's freaking tough. Now when we see labor in movies, in TV shows, it's very dramatic and intense and screaming immediately and water breaking and all of a sudden the baby's coming. And oftentimes there's a little bit more of a slower progression, especially with your first baby. So kind of keeping these signs in mind, you might be able to be like, hey, I think I'm in early labor. Not panic, do your thing, continue to rest and do activity, continue to pee pretty frequently, continue to just monitor your signs and symptoms so that you feel prepared when it's time to go into the hospital or to your preferred birthing location. So today's video is gonna kind of be a fun one, going over 10 signs that labor is coming, that maybe early labor has started, and we will kind of count them down from the least labory to the most labory and my number 10 is going to be like okay this is a really really good shot that you yes you my friend are officially in labor so without further ado let's get started towards the end of your pregnancy one sign that labor might be coming is that all of a sudden you've kind of been gaining weight steadily, about a pound a week is what we see towards the end of pregnancy, that stops, slows down, or even you lose a little bit of weight. And why this happens is twofold. You're maybe not quite so hungry as labor is getting ready to start. You're doing more of light snacking versus heavy meals just with how large your belly is, what your GI tract is feeling like. And then also you are more likely to start really getting rid of some water weight right towards the end of your pregnancy. Now this doesn't happen for everybody, but it is something that we see fairly often. So as you're getting closer to your 40 week mark, you might notice that you have stopped gaining weight so quickly. That does not mean that your baby is not still gaining weight. We expect baby in the last few weeks of pregnancy to be really packing on the pounds and to gain about a half a pound to a pound a week. Another sign that labor might be coming pretty soon is that your labor hormones are starting to increase. Relaxant is one of those hormones that we're gonna start to notice an increase of, even though you've had it the whole pregnancy, an increase of right before and during labor. So relaxant is a wonderful hormone that allows our pelvis and all of those ligaments and skeleture to really move and be mobile during labor. It also kind of makes you a little bit clumsier and a little bit looser. Everything is just going to feel a little bit looser thanks to that relaxing hormone that helps get our passageway ready for baby. Another sign that labor might be coming is the feeling of getting a burst of energy and wanting to just get everything done in your house, also known as nesting. So nesting and this burst of energy, I really encourage you to like go full force into it, especially if you can be on your hands and knees, cleaning the floors, getting everything tidied up, being in forward leaning positions, being in positions where you are on your hands and knees or kind of up and moving around are really beneficial for helping your baby get into the best position possible for labor. So that might be one reason why we see this nesting thing happen. Another sign that baby is getting ready and getting in the best position possible is called lightening or when your baby drops into your pelvis. So you might notice all of a sudden that you can, <gasps> finally take a deep breath again. 
that all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I have to pee every five minutes, even more so than before. More than likely, this means that your baby has dropped. And sometimes this is even quite visible when the belly all of a sudden is much lower down. Typically, we see the baby drop before labor with your first baby. But often with subsequent babies, your baby drops when we have cervical change and everything together during labor. Another hormonal part of labor that can happen a little bit before labor starts and in early labor is that we might have some softer stools or some diarrhea-like stools. And these are caused by the lovely hormone prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are made in different areas throughout your body and so they can affect your GI tract causing looser stools. Like what we see is in early labor, those prostaglandins are working to thin out your cervix and also working to kind of clear you out. So this is why for a lot of people, they don't have a bowel movement until about three or four days postpartum because their prostaglandins have cleared them out. Maybe they pooped a little bit while they were pushing and then also their GI tract and everything just slowed down during labor because they, their body was really focusing on putting energy towards the uterus. So if you are having some nice loose stools, you're like, hey, hey, diarrhea, probably the first time in your life you are appreciative of those nice loose stools. That could be a sign that we are in some early labor or labor is coming. In addition to maybe having some looser stools, you might notice some changes in your discharge and kind of everything that's going on vaginally when labor is coming or when you are in labor. So often in the weeks or days before labor starts, as we're having some of those practice contractions as our body's getting ready for labor, we lose something called our mucus plug. And the mucus plug is typically kind of clearish, maybe a little bit brown or pink tinged with a little bit of blood. It basically looks like slime and snot, but clear or brown or pink tinged. And this tends to come out before labor. So that coming out can be a clue, a sign that labor is coming. But your mucus plug can regenerate, so sometimes people lose a mucus plug earlier in their pregnancy. It's always a good idea if there's a change in discharge to chat with your doctor. And it still might be a few days to a few weeks before labor starts with the mucus plug coming out. So I love if you've lost your mucus plug, fabulous, but just simply losing your mucus plug is not a reason to immediately pack up your bags and head to labor and delivery. Another sign that there might be a little bit of labor happening, we talked about this already, right, with the mucus plug might be a little bit pink tinged or a little bit brown tinged from some bleeding is actually having something called bloody show, which is a little bit more of a red tinged mixed in with that mucus. Our cervix is super, super vascular. So as it goes away, we are going to notice more bleeding. Now this is always something that I find my patients be really, really concerned about, but it's just a little bit of light bleeding that should be contained in a panty liner. If you are having heavy bleeding, like a period, definitely call your doctor. If you are having anything that you are concerned about as far as bleeding goes, always call your doctor, always double check with them. But that can be something that we see in labor as the cervix is starting to thin and dilate. We can also see a little bit of bloody show after cervical exams or membrane sweeps. So if you've been to your provider and had either of those done recently, you might notice a little bit of pink or brown tinge discharge just from that cervix being a little bit irritated. But that coupled with contractions hopefully means, fingers crossed, that your cervix is changing. And with the changing cervix, we know that labor is rocking and rolling. In early labor, you might start to notice a little bit of cramping, and this cramping might feel like menstrual cramping, but you also might notice some pain in your back as baby is preparing to come through the passageway. Our back can really be affected just with the way that the ligaments are attached to our pelvis. You might even notice some pain or cramping in your thighs. So those can all be signs of early labor, of early contractions getting started. And you might even notice when contractions are hard and rip-roaring, and they're very obviously contractions, that you are feeling it 
in your belly, in your back, and in your thighs are all normal places to feel contractions. And I have a whole series of labor toolbox things that you can use to help deal with all of those pains in all of those different places. Another sign that yes, you are in labor or you will be shortly, whether it is of your body's own volition or of a little bit of medicalized help, is if your water breaks. So when your water breaks, this is the amniotic sac that's around the baby. Somewhere in that sac develops a little or a large hole. It might be back behind the baby. It might be in front of the baby's head and water or the amniotic fluid comes out of your vaginal canal. So when your water breaks, there are four things that I want you to keep in your head. We have a mnemonic, TACO. So what time did your water break? how much fluid there was, what the color was. It should be clear, but sometimes it is a little bit brown tinged or green tinged from your baby's first poop. And then is there an odor? It really should be odorless, but if it has a foul smelling odor, you definitely wanna let your provider know because there could be an infection brewing or going on within your uterus. And so when your water breaks, the majority of people will go into labor within 12 to 24 hours, depending on your group B strep status or any other risk factors that you have. Your doctor might encourage you to stay home and rest in the beginning, or they might encourage you to come in as soon as your water breaks. So definitely touching base with them when your water breaks is going to be important. And if you are not going into labor after those 12 to 24 hours, your doctor might encourage you to do some labor augmentation process whether that is um, Cytotec or Pitocin or a combination of different natural induction methods to help your body go into labor to reduce your risk of developing a uterine infection. Because once your water breaks, the barrier between the outside world and your baby is broken. An infection can more easily get up into your uterus and get your uterus infected and potentially get your baby infected. And that is one reason why we really try to limit cervical exams once your water is broken as well. Now, the real and true thing key to you that you are in labor is going to be contractions that are getting longer and stronger and closer together that you are having to change how you're coping with them. So you might be contracting every five minutes and they're not really phasing you, but if they start to get stronger where you're having to breathe and stop and really focus and work through those contractions, a really good sign that labor is coming or really that labor is here. So what we look for, for you to call your doctor, for you to head into your preferred birthing location, be at the hospital, having your midwife come to your home or going to a birthing center, is that we kind of follow a rule called the 411 rule or the 511 rule. And your provider will let you know which one they prefer. And this also is gonna be based on what number baby is it, how far away you are from your preferred birthing location. But really what we're looking for is that you are having contractions every four to five minutes that are lasting about a minute in length that you are having to actively work through or use coping skills to cope with and that these have been lasting for at least an hour. And then you're gonna call, you're gonna chat with your birth provider and kind of see what the next step is. It might be that the two of you agree that you can stay in your home base, or it might be that the two of you agree that it's time for you to come in to labor and delivery and work on meeting your baby there. And that decision is going to be based on a whole bunch of things, but your birth provider more than likely would like to speak with you and hear how you are dealing with the contractions how things are feeling to you just because you are going to be the best person to be able to explain that and not for everybody but for a lot of people we can kind of listen to you deal with a contraction listen to your birth song the noises you're making how your breath is and kind of gauge where you are in labor but ultimately if you are concerned and you think that you need to be seen it's always okay to go to labor and delivery and kind of get things checked out because the thing that you really can't 100% perceive or know at home, you can have a really good clue, but you can't necessarily perceive at home, is cervical change. So what is labor? Labor is contractions that have cervical change associated with them. And cervical change is not just dilation, which I think a lot of people get super fixated on, but cervical change is how open your cervix is or the dilation, how thin your cervix is or the effacement, and also where your baby is in the pelvis. 
pelvis, which is the station. And what we do is we look at the ischial spine, which are the bony prominences inside the pelvis, and see how far down your baby is in relation to those. And all of those things together account for cervical change. And in early labor, sometimes those things are changing just super minimally, but that's still early labor. Now, here's the thing. I know it can be challenging to know when you're in labor. I know you could have watched this whole daggone video and you're still like, well, I don't know. And if you don't know, it is okay and it is normal and it is fine and it's not frowned upon to go into labor and delivery, to go into your provider's office and have them perform a cervical exam if you would like and see where you are and kind of help you gauge what next steps will be. Because if you've never been in labor before, or even if you have, every labor is so different that sometimes you don't really know what's going on. And there is no shame in going to labor and delivery and realizing, hey, this isn't quite labor yet it's okay. It's okay. And I don't want you to be discouraged or disappointed, even though those feelings are totally valid because your body knows exactly what to do. And it is preparing for the birth of your baby. And sometimes that preparation takes a little bit of extra time. Okay. Because your body's whole job, the entire pregnancy was to keep itself pregnant, to keep your cervix closed, to keep your baby safe. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time for your body to let go of that job and move on to the next job, which is to bring your baby safely into the world. So what signs of labor have you had? I really haven't had any yet, but I'm gonna just hope and pray to the labor gods that we all experience our signs of labor when it's time that we are given patience until then. And until next time, bye guys.